On July 4, 1976, as the United States marked its 200th anniversary, a group of Israeli special operations soldiers pulled off an incredible hostage rescue operation, making it one of the most impressive feats in military history. Lieutenant Colonel Yonatan Netanyahu, brother of the current Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, served as the commander of the elite Sairet Matkol unit. This unit was specifically responsible for the hostage rescue aspect of the operation. On Sunday, June 27th, Air France Flight 139 departed from Israel's Ben Gurion Airport, made a layover in Athens, and proceeded towards its ultimate destination in Paris with 248 passengers. Approximately at 12.35 p.m., four hijackers, two from the Red Army faction and two from Palestinian individuals, seized control of the aircraft. The hijackers made the plane land quickly in Libya and then flew down to Entebbe, Uganda, where at least three more insurgents joined them. The hostages were taken to the old terminal building and guarded by insurgents and Ugandan soldiers. Back then, Uganda was ruled by the dictator Idi Amin. They didn't know at the time that Amin and his army were fully cooperating with the insurgents. The insurgents insisted on the release of over 50 individuals imprisoned in various countries, with the majority held in Israel. Although numerous elite units expected the country to take action, the vast distance made it seem unlikely that the Israeli Defense Force would actually carry out a rescue operation. As Yonatan and the Sairet Metkol members were getting ready for a secret mission in Sinai, Egypt, they got word about the hijacking. Avi Weiss, the unit's intelligence officer, mentioned that members not heading to the Sinai were on standby, waiting for updates. But once that they found out that the plane had gone to Entebbe, they were told to stand down because of the long distance which was more than 4,000 kilometers. The chances of getting the go-ahead for the mission seemed really unlikely. On the 29th, they let go of the non-Jewish hostages in two groups, women and children on Wednesday the 30th and the men on the morning of July 1st. However, the Air France crew insisted on staying with their Jewish and Israeli passengers. This triggered the planning and execution of what would later be known as Operation Thunderbolt. This was a crucial time because, until the hostages were freed, there was hardly any information about how many insurgents and Ugandan soldiers were involved or where exactly the hostages were being held. So planning a rescue mission was almost impossible. The lack of a workable plan and the insurgent's ultimatum set to expire on Thursday considered negotiating with the insurgent and possibly giving in to their demands. This went against Israel's usual stance of not yielding to insurgents' demands. The freed hostages were transported to Paris and on the evening and night of July 1st, an Israeli officer conducted interviews with some of them. The liberated hostages provided crucial information detailing the whereabouts of the Israeli hostages, the number of insurgents present, the layout of the building, and other significant information. A Mossad agent piloted a light aircraft over Entebbe, simulating engine trouble. During this operation, he captured photographs of the area and reported that there were only dozens, not hundreds, of Ugandan soldiers guarding the building. This information was verified by the released hostages. This convinced the Israeli government that the mission had at least a reasonable chance of success. Of course, getting the timing and speed right for the operation was crucial. Now armed with useful information, Yonatan, who had recently returned from the Sinai, jumped into action. They had to come up with a detailed plan and be ready to launch in just over two days. The Israeli Defense Force settled on Saturday night as the time to go for the raid, since the insurgents deadline was on Sunday. Yonatan started planning on Thursday evening after getting orders for an operation from an Israeli commander at 8 p.m. The tight planning schedule was an impressive feat of leadership by the commander. They had to plan every phase of the operation, sort out all the details, including loading and unloading the aircraft, do rehearsals, check equipment, and tie up any loose ends by Friday. On Saturday morning, there would be a briefing with Yonatan and his officers. After that, they'd leave Lod Airport late in the morning fly to Sinai around noon, and then wait there for the long nine-hour flight to Entebbe. Yonatan was shaping his plan in real time, as information from the liberated hostages continued to come in. The situation was highly dynamic. Even during rehearsals, if issues arose or additional information reached the unit, Yonatan would adapt the plan on the spot. The plan involved assigning five compact assault teams to secure the two halls of the old terminal where the hostages were believed to be held. Yifta Riker, the unit's second-in-command, 
would lead the two teams tasked with clearing the west wing and the second floor, where Ugandan soldiers were known to stay at night along with the customs area. Yonatan would be alongside the command element next to the two teams entering the second exit of the large hall. However, the main concern on everyone's minds was whether the mission would actually happen. Yonatan understood this skepticism well. He encouraged the men to believe that the operation would happen, no matter what doubts they might have had. Everything changed after the rehearsal on Friday night, when the Israeli Defense Force's chief of staff told the unit that he planned to recommend to the government to give the approval, which they later did. Avoiding thunderstorms over Lake Victoria, the C-130 transports were nearing the end of their 7-hour and 40-minute flight. They landed without being detected, just a minute later than planned. The second and third Israeli planes arrived six minutes later, bringing in reinforcements and troops assigned to help combat the Ugandan forces around the airport. The fourth aircraft, the only one with enough fuel for a round trip to Entebbe and back to Israel, arrived empty, ready to evacuate the hostages. On the first C-130, they intended to use a limo that looked like Idi Amin's, with the Israeli commandos dressed as Ugandan soldiers and accompanying jeeps filled with more commandos. The Mercedes used for this disguise was in bad shape. It had a bunch of problems. During the rehearsal on Friday night, the Mercedes wouldn't start and a jeep driver had to give it a push to get it going. Yonatan's team drove slowly and calmly toward the old terminal, pretending to be Ugandan forces. They were told not to shoot until they reached the old terminal to catch the insurgents off guard. However, as they neared the terminal, two Ugandan guards, recognizing a recent purchase of a white Mercedes by Idi Amin, signaled for the vehicles to stop. Yonatan ordered the commandos to shoot the guards using silenced pistols, but the initial shots didn't eliminate them. Another commando and one of the following Land Rovers had to use a regular rifle to finish the job. Now the rescuers were worried they might have lost the element of surprise and rushed to the terminal. The hostages were in the main hall of the airport building, right next to the runway. Upon entering the terminal, the commandos shouted through a megaphone to stay down. They are Israeli soldiers in both Hebrew and English. The lightning-fast attack, lasting just six minutes, resulted in the elimination of all eight insurgents. Ugandan soldiers shot at the Israelis from the control tower, and unfortunately, Yonatan was killed as he led the hostages towards the safety of the aircraft. Five other Israeli commandos were injured during the operation, and 45 Ugandan soldiers lost their lives in the confrontation. Just 20 minutes after arriving, Israeli Defense Force soldiers started the evacuation of the hostages in the fourth aircraft. By 23 hours and 59 minutes, the planes were en route back home. But let us know what you think in the comment section below. If you found this content entertaining or helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this one. And thanks for watching.